Welcome back. In today's video, I have a 3000 watt low frequency inverter from Signier Power. Now in one of my previous videos, I attempted to run a five ton log splitter off of a high frequency inverter with these results. No, no, it will not run off a 3000 watt inverter. After failing at that attempt, Signier Power reached out to me and offered to send me their 3000 watt low frequency inverter in order to actually run the load properly. So a high frequency inverter is great for all your normal loads, but for a low inductive load, such as a motor, sub pump, well pump, anything like that with a high surge power, you're gonna need to use a low frequency inverter. Let's see if it'll cut. Okay, and we're ready to go. Oh, good so far. And that's it, there you have it, it worked. So next, I'm gonna have it installed in my golf cart for next summer, and we're gonna be able to cut logs. And looking at the outputs, we have a GFCI protected 120 volt receptacle. We also have an AC input for line one and line two. Now this only inputs 240 volts, and then this inverter has its own built-in transformer that splits the voltage from 240 down to 120. And then you have an output here of hot one, hot two, and a neutral. And your ground is over here. And this is the transformer that is gonna give you the 120 volt, as well as the surge capacity needed to run any high inductive loads. These are all the circuitries, and your battery connections are up here and your AC connections are down here. Now for size comparison, this is a 3000 watt split phase inverter, low frequency, and this is a 3000 watt high frequency inverter. As you can see, there's quite a size difference because of the huge transformer that's gonna give you that low frequency surge power. I believe this one can do 9000 watts for 20 seconds of surge and 3000 watts of continuous run. So quite a massive unit. So the way that I'm currently gonna be hooking this up, I'm gonna to wanna to be able to transport it on and off my golf cart relatively easy. So I am just gonna have two battery connectors here with an Anderson connector, and then I'm gonna use 12 gauge wire coming off of the terminal block down here. So now for my connection on the golf cart, all I'm gonna do is I have an Anderson connector capable of 50 amps. Now that this is a 48 volt unit, there's not that many amps to create the draw that I need for my log splitter. And then on the golf cart, I will just install an Anderson connector like this here and make a cable to go from here to here. And that way, all I need to do is carry this and a couple of cables. Now all I need to do to finish off at this end is install my cover to protect the terminals and then I have my plug for my battery here. And for my AC side, I have a 12 gauge extension cord. Now I'm just gonna cut the end off of this and install it into the terminal block here because this receptacle here doesn't give me the full 9,000 watts that I need to power the load. And you can see there, this extension cord lights up and it indicates that there's power, which is gonna be nice to know that this is actually running the power that I need. Because this extension cord has stranded wire and the type of terminal block is a screw down, I'm going to use ferro connectors in order to combine the wires to make it into the proper connection. I'm not gonna crimp it here. When I tighten it down here, it's gonna crimp it itself, and then it's just gonna stay inside the terminal block as well. What I've done is there is a protective cover that goes over the back here. And this protective cover didn't crimp the wires or anything in order to keep it from getting yanked out. So I drilled a hole and I put my own. So I'm gonna put my cord through that first. 
Use the ferro. And tighten it down. Now you can give it a good yank. It's not coming out. So next I'm going to do my neutral wire. Live wire which I'm gonna put into hot two because this receptacle is actually running off a hot one. So if I go hot two, then it'll just kind of split the power up a little bit. In case I ever wanna plug like a table saw or something into this one while I'm running the log splitter. There we go. Next, all I need to do is put my protective cover on. And all the connections look good up in there. So, I'm gonna put pressure pushing in and then tighten down these two screws. And there you go. Now I have my AC side with a plug, as well as I have a, another receptacle for anything I need. And these are the two circuit breakers for the receptacles. So this is gonna be circuit breaker for this one, and this is gonna be circuit breaker for this one. So now I have my DC here, and I can just quickly plug it in. And I have my AC on the other end here that I can get the full 9,000 watts of surge power that I need. Now you may want to use the different settings for your dip switches, but these are the settings here that I've used for my dip switches. And here's the battery selection I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using battery selection number two, which is for AMG1, which is going to charge me up to 14.1. I could have used lithium iron phosphate, which my cart will be running off of. It charges up to 14.6, but I only want to charge to 14.1, so AMG1 is going to be the selection I'm going to use. Not that I will ever really ever use this to charge. All I'm going to use it for is run my log splitter, but in the future, when I do run lithium iron phosphate, I will use probably the lithium mode to go to 14.6 per 12 volt battery, which is gonna be 58.2, I believe. So I just wanted to do a quick overview of this inverter. Uh, in the summertime, when I do actually hook it up and start splitting logs, I will show you all how it works and everything like that. But just wanted to give you an introduction to a low frequency inverter for all of your high inductive loads. If you like this video, like, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Bye.